In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Here in the midst of the Domitian after feast, I was pondering on just how much the West has greatly decreased its weaponry in our war from the garden, or the battle of free will and our inclination to find acceptable habitation in the murk of sin. I often tell church newcomers how every week I hear or read something new, or something that has always been there, but now has bloomed or blossomed into an incredibly beautiful flower, rich in color, and ever so pleasantly fragrant. It makes me feel like a bee or a hummingbird amidst the summer flowers, or maybe in your orchard. The nectar is life sustainable and necessity for me. I read the morning prayers as I always have, and this week, Prayer 7 came to life. Listen to this blooming passage. I offer the groans of my heart to thee unceasingly. Strive for me, O sovereign lady. Accept my service of supplication and offer it to compassionate God. Have you ever stopped to examine what it is your heart is groaning for? Back in my memories of rainy and snowy days, we used to assemble jigsaw puzzles. We would sit there for hours until the chairs became unbearable. Our eyes were overcome with exhaustion. As we neared that point of quitting or taking a break, we would find a piece of puzzle with the right colors, the correct imagery, and we'd try to force that piece to fit, maybe using our fist. Maybe that was just me. It didn't fit. Its shape was just a little bit different. Our hearts yearn to fit, to belong, to be safe within our shepherd's fold. As our Lord calls us, I laid down my life for the sheep, and other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring. And they will later hear my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd from John 10. We groan, our heart groans to be deeply cared for as a mama bear tending her cubs, as our Lord groaning for our salvation, wanting his creation to always be connected. Hearing holy murderers, our Lord has blessed us with a church full of existence. And I watch mothers as they navigate and function within the family structure. I have to admit, as a man, it is somewhat foreign to me. It isn't as natural. Scientists say that a mother helps a child develop healthy relationships in life from a connected sense of belonging and live a life with less stress and anxiety as we function within the emotional challenges that come our way. And then I reflect upon my aging mother as she approaches her 88th birthday this month and how she keeps a watchful eye on me still to this day. Her mind does not allow her to recognize me anymore, but her heart knows we are family. Our Theotokos is always keeping a watchful eye on us. She is our mama bear. It is not a coincidence that you are here. You are here because your heart groans and aches. You are here because you yearn for a perfect nurturing that our great mother can provide. She is your mother. You share the same bloodline. You are a son or daughter of the kingdom to come. St. Luke informs us of 
her conversation with Elizabeth. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. She was touched by the Holy Spirit. And God did great things to her. The psalmist wrote, I will make your name to be remembered in all generations. Therefore the people shall praise you forever and ever. In Psalm 45. St. Vincent of Lorenz warns us in his writings from around the year 434. Therefore, may God forbid that anyone should attempt to defraud Holy Mary of her superiority and divine grace and of her special glory. For by unique favor of our Lord and God, she is to be confessed to be the most true and most blessed mother of God. To the Theotokos, let us run now most earnestly, we sinners all and wretched ones, and fall down, and repentance calling from the depths of our souls, O Lady. Come unto our aid, have compassion upon us, hasten thou, for we are lost in a throng of transgressions, Turn not thy servants away with empty hands, for thee alone do we have as our only hope. Glory to thee, O Lord. Glory to thee. 